Good morning, boys and girls, and I am glad you're with me on this Sunday morning or wherever or whenever you may be watching this pool lesson. Today, we are going to be in Genesis chapter 21, and the only thing that you are going to need today is your Bible, your hands, and your voice. And so, uh, if you don't have your Bible with you, run and get your Bibles, and again, we're going to be in that first book of the Old Testament, the very first book of the Bible, and we're going to be in Genesis 21, and today we are going to be talking about how God hears us. In fact, I want us to do a little something here as we get uh, started this morning. I want you to raise your hands high in the air and as loud as you can, I want you to yell, Hallelujah! 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 Does anybody know what hallelujah means? It's actually a Hebrew word that means praise, praise the Lord. And uh, that is what we're going to do today as we talk about how God hears us. And so, now that you've gotten yourself warmed up, when I lift my, my arms up really high, as loud as you can, so that, that everybody all the way up to heaven can hear us. I want you to holler and shout, hallelujah. And then as my hands come a little lower, I want you to get softer. And as they get lower, I want you to get softer. And then as they disappear out of sight, I want you to get really, really quiet. Okay, can you get really, really quiet? All right, so here we go. Do you think that we have to shout really loud with our arms straight up in the air for God to hear us? Or what about when we whisper? Do you think God hears us when we whisper? Well, what about, uh, oh, I, I have a thought. What about uh, if everybody is talking at the same time? Do you know how, do you remember how when we go over the pool rules and we talk about respect and we talk about how many people talk at one time, can talk at one time? I always tell you, only one person gets to talk at a time. And that is so that I can hear you. And, and sometimes in order to practice that, we have everybody talk at the same time. And so, whether you are watching this all by yourself, or maybe you're watching it with your brothers or sisters, or your mom or dad, or whoever it is that you're watching, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want everybody that's in the room to be answering the questions at the same time. In fact, you might even want to go and get somebody so that there will be more than one person in the room for you. All right. So here, here's a few questions I have for you. Uh, what is your name? Pastor Charles. How old are you? Well, that's none of your business, but I am old. What is your favorite color? Oh, mine is blue. Uh, what is the first animal that comes to your mind? Cow. I don't know why I thought of cow, but it popped into my mind and it popped out my mouth. Uh, what was the favorite thing that you had on Thanksgiving Day? Cranberry. Uh, ooh, my wife made pumpkin pie that was really good too. Uh, ooh, ooh, what is your favorite thing to do at Christmas time? Mine is to watch my kids, my children, open their gifts. Uh, are you ready to go back to school? Wow, I think I even heard the answer to that one. All right, so was it easy to hear the answers when there was more than one person in the room shouting out the answers? Or was it more difficult? What do I tell you when everybody's talking at one time in the pool? That it's real hard for me to hear the answers? Well, have you ever thought, what about God? If everybody's talking to God at the same time, how can God possibly hear us? Well, that's a really good question, isn't it? 
Well, do you know that while it's impossible for us to hear and understand everything that's being said in, in a noisy room, God can. That's one of the differences between us and God. That God hears every person. He knows even every person's thoughts and intents before they speak. So he can hear us. Um, well, why do you think God wants us to pray? That he likes to hear from us? He wants us to have a friendship with him? He might want us to know that we're not in this alone, that we recognize that, that God is the, the authority, the source of everything good? Well, that leads to the next question. Why is prayer good? It keeps us connected to God. It's a great way to praise God. Uh, we get to tell God what's on our hearts. It helps us to know what's on our hearts. It uh, helps us to know what we're thinking. Uh, God tells us that sometimes we don't have because we don't ask. That, uh, that God wants us to come in and talk to him and ask for it. And then he gives it to us. What happens when we pray? Well, I know for me when I pray, it usually makes me feel a lot better. I, I have God's peace. I remember that I'm not alone. I remember that God is, is with me. I remember how God's answered prayers in the past. And I can depend on him to answer prayers in the future. So today... We're going to start with the word prayer, and then we're going to talk about Genesis chapter 21. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can praise you, that we can give you our hallelujahs. Lord, I just pray that as we uh, go through this lesson, that we would see how you answer prayer, that you're always with us, that you know what's going on, that we can depend on you, that you take care of us. Lord, I just thank you that you answer prayer, that, that Lord, you listen to us, that, that God, you, you lead us through life in unexpected ways. So to you be the praise and the glory and the honor, both now and forevermore. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when I was telling you about hallelujah, hallelujah, that it means praise the Lord, did I may have forgotten to tell you that it's a Hebrew word. We're going to learn another Hebrew word here in a little bit. One of my favorite titles for God is, comes from today's lesson. And, and so I'm excited to share this with you. And I hope that as we go through it, that we learn about some more, or we learn more about why we talk to God and pray to God. So Genesis chapter 21 and as we go through this, I am going to stop at times and I'm going to ask some questions and I'm going to get you thinking. So I want you, want you to be paying attention and I want you to really think about what it is that we ask for and why we maybe we don't ask for it. Okay. Uh, we're in Genesis chapter 21, and we're going to begin in verse 8. So that's the big 21. That tells us it's the chapter. And then the little numbers are the verses. And so we're going to start in verse 8. The child grew and was weaned. This is speaking of Isaac. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your maidservant. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. 
I will make the son of the maidservant into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders, then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. All right. And so... Uh, I, uh, Ishmael, the, the son of Abraham and Hagar, is a teenager. And when Isaac was two or three, four years old, he was making fun of Isaac. And so when Sarah saw this, she got angry with him. And so she told Abraham to send Hagar, his mom, and Ishmael away. Hagar is Ishmael's mom. And so God told Abraham to do what Sarah said. Now, how do you think Hagar felt about this? That she's leaving the home that she'd known for so long. That she's being forced to leave with her son. And they just have a skin of water and they just have some food. And off they go into the desert. Do you think it was scary? I think so. Um... You know, Abraham is, is really going to have to make a tough decision here. Does, does he listen to, to Hagar, who I'm assuming wanted to stay, and Sarah, who wanted to, to go away? Thankfully, God was listening. And God gave him guidance. God told him what to do. Do, do you ever face tough decisions? Maybe somebody is wanting you to do the wrong thing with them, or... Maybe you have to make that decision. Am I going to share a, a toy with my brother or sister? Am I going to do the chore that mom or dad told me to do? Um, am I going to spend time with God? We, we, we all face tough decisions. Well, if you're facing a tough decision now, why don't we just take a moment and, and let's, let's tell God. Let's talk to God about tough decisions that we have to make. You know, everybody has to make tough decisions. Even, even adults make tough decisions. And so I think one of the great things that we can do is we can, we can talk to God about our, our tough decisions, about maybe some of the problems that we have. All right. So let's, let's keep going. Let's, let's see what happens next. And so we're going to pick up in, in, in verse 15. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one tree, one of the, the bushes. I'm sorry, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down nearby about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there nearby, she began to cry. Do you think Hagar was afraid? I think she was. Uh, do you think she was desperate? She was thinking that, that now that they were out of water, that the desert would kill them. And, and so she puts Ishmael under a bush and she goes off a ways so that she can't see him. She doesn't want to see her son die. Do you think maybe she's bitter with Sarah? that sent her away, and, and Abraham that forced her to go. You know, there, there's times where we feel desperate or we feel afraid. Maybe there's times where we're angry at people. Hmm. You know, they're, 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 in fact, I find myself in a situation now where it would be very easy to get angry at the wrong people. In fact, it'd be easy to get angry at people and hold it against them and to get bitter. But God doesn't want me to do that. What do you think God wants me to do? God wants me to talk to him about it. That's right. And so Hagar tells Ishmael to rest in the shade and 
he's thirsty. Maybe he was crying. And Hagar, she sat by herself and she began to cry too. Have you ever found yourself in tears because of your, your desperation or your loneliness or, or your, your fear? Hmm. Well, why don't you tell God about your fear and ask Him to help? What do you think is going to happen? Abraham or God had told Abraham that he would make a great nation out of this boy because he's the son of Abraham. But now he's under a bush and he's about ready to die. What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. All right, we are in verse 17. God heard the boy crying. God heard the boy crying. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up, take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. In fact, Hagar is going to call God Elroy. Elroy, the God who sees. God heard. And God saw what Hagar and, and Ishmael were going through. And, and, and God heard their cries of desperation. And he opened her eyes and there was a well. In fact, the, the desert of Beersheba. Beersheba means seven wells in Hebrew. And, and, and so I'm just giving you all sorts of Hebrew lessons today, aren't I? And, and so here in, in the desert of the seven wells, God opens her eyes and she sees a well. And she goes and she fills up the water skin. And God saves their lives. Do you think that, that Hagar and Ishmael have something to praise God for? They do. That God hear, heard them. That God sees them. That God cares for them. That, that, that God gives them water to drink. And, and verse 20 tells us God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and he became an archer. Well, And then while he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother went to Egypt and got a wife for him. Hagar's originally for, from Egypt. And so she goes back to Egypt and she gets... A wife for him. Now I'm hoping that none of you have wives today. At least none of you little ones that are listening. But you know if you do. Maybe you should be thanking God for your wife. You know. God had a plan for Hagar and Ishmael. And I think that. Because God has a plan for you. And God has a plan for me. That just as we. We took a moment and we told God about any desperate times or fears that we have or difficult decisions that we need to make that we should take a time and we should stop and we should thank God for the way he answers us, the way he's with us, the way he hears us, the way he sees us. Take a moment and thank God that he's with you and that he hears you and that he sees you. Now, I have a little poster here. Let me just scoot over a little bit, and then I can hold my poster up and still be in the, the picture here. This tells us some various ways that we can pray to God. The first one is praise, hallelujah. We can, we can thank God that He's with us, that we can thank God and, and praise God that He hears us, that He sees us, 
that God knows what we need, that God has a plan for us, that we can confess. Confession is simply agreeing with God when we've done wrong. And every one of us does wrong, don't we? And so we confess. We tell God that we've done the wrong thing. And we can ask God to give us the strength to do the right thing. We can ask God here on the bottom for guidance. That's what we saw that Hagar and Ishmael needed, didn't they? they, they and even Abraham. He had a tough decision to make, and so he needed some guidance. Does he side with Sarah and send Hagar and Ishmael away? Does he side with Ishmael? Because Ishmael was his oldest son and, and say and go against his wife. Does he uh, hang out or does he agree with Hagar and, and keep Hagar and Ishmael in the camp? He had a tough choice. He needed guidance. And we need guidance too. We need to, to look to God's word and we need to talk to God about what we should do. There are times where we need help. Help! Bible tells us to call upon him in a time of trouble and he will hear us, he will rescue us, and we will praise him, we will thank him. Oh, the one here in the middle, wonderings. That sounds like an interesting one, doesn't it? Wonderings. Oh God, I, I wonder what's going to happen. Lord, I, I wonder... Lord, is school going to continue or is it not going to continue? Is COVID going to get worse and we're going to go back to remote learning or do I get to continue to go to school? Lord, what's the best thing for my family? To, your, your parents are making a lot of wonderings. What's the best thing to do about church? Should I go in person? Should I wear a mask or not wear a mask? Should we go someplace for Thanksgiving or stay here? Lots of wonderings, lots of questions. We don't have the answers for them, but God does. And so we tell God about our wonderings. Sometimes our wonderings even deal with God. God, are you there? God, do you care about me? God, are you with me? And in wondering and voicing it, we can be reminded that God is with us, that God loves us, He cares for us. We can give thanks for the answers to prayer. God, I, I thank you that you've given me a family. I thank you, God, that we had Thanksgiving together. I thank you, God, that I have a school to go to. I thank you, God, for people that care about me. Other stuff. Or just stuff, I mean. Just stuff. You know, I spend a lot of time talking to God about just stuff. Oh, I'll be driving along and I'll just start thinking maybe about a verse that I learned at church or at Awana or in Sunday school or vacation Bible school. And, Lord, what does that mean? Mm, Lord, thank you that you saved me. Oh, Lord, thank you for that beautiful sunset, sunrise. Thank you, God, for the way the clouds look today. Sometimes I just have to say, Lord, that's cool. Lord, I'm glad you're with me. And, and prayer is just simply talking to God. It's, it's giving God thanks for who he is and what he's done and how he relates to us and and how he's always with us. Do you know one of the most amazing things about God hearing us is that he can hear us even if we whisper. Sometimes, no, not sometimes, always God hears us, even if we just think it in our heads. Well, I think today that I'm going to pray a little bit different here at the close. I am going to whisper a prayer. And so I'll get here a little closer so maybe you can hear me. Maybe you can't hear me. I don't know. I've never tried this before. But let's pray. Lord God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you are there, that you're here with us every step of the way and that we can praise you and thank you. That God, you give us help, that we can tell you our wanderings and our just stuff. Lord, we thank you that uh, you give us guidance. 
Lord, uh, you are so good to us. We're so grateful for you. I pray now, God, as we go through this day and through this week, that we would spend time talking to you because you want to hear from us, because you love us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I hope that you have a good day and that you have a good week. Next week, we're going to move into our Advent. We're going to start talking about Jesus and his birth and his resurrection. Well, not his resurrection. That, that comes later. We're going to talk about Jesus' birth and how Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. So I hope that you all have a good day and a good week and know that I miss you. Bye.